Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about the compound gear trends, and even we will be discussing a numerical on compound gear trend. So, what do you mean by compound gear trend? When there are more than one gear on a shaft, we can able to see here. This particular thing we can able to this particular gear we can able to see means it has only one shaft. But this particular shaft it is having two shafts. I mean, in a single shaft, two gears you can able to see. Similarly, here also on a single shaft we can able to see two gears. So these kind of things we are calling it as a compound gear things. And examples have taken this particular thing where gear one, which is having only one shaft, where gear two and gear three is mounted on a common shaft. Next is gear four and gear five. Again, these both. Gears are mounted on a common shaft, and we have gear six, which is mounted on a a single shaft. So here we can able to see this. I have named all these gears with A, B, C, D. So now gear one is the driving gear, which is mounted on the shaft A. So I will be naming the shafts as A, B, C, D, and gears as one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the gear one. This particular gear one is mounted on the shaft A. Next, uh, we have gear two and gear three. These two gears is nothing but compound gears uh, because both the gears is mounted on a common shaft B. Now we have gear four and gear five. Again, this four gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear, it is mounted on a common shaft that is called as C. Now gear six. This gear six is the driven gear. Since gear one is the driver, obviously driven uh, gear six should be the follower or the driven. And this is mounted on the shaft T. So if driver is rotating in the clockwise direction, then these that is gear two and gear three together it should rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. Now moving to the next gear, that is gear four and five. If this gear two and gear three, which is having a common shaft B, if it is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction, then obviously gear four and gear five, which has the common shaft gear uh, C, it should rotate in the clockwise direction. Now moving to the next one, if uh, shaft C is rotating in the clockwise direction, means uh, then this is that is uh, the shaft D should rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. Sir. Now, let me consider capital N one is the speed of the driving gear or the driver, and capital T one is the thing, but the total number of teeth which is present on the gear one or the driver. Similarly, let me consider N two and N three. N4 and N5 and N6 is nothing but speed of the the respective gears. Similarly, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6 will be the total number of teeth which is present on the this respective gears. Now, how to write the the speed ratio for the gear trains? We will see compound gear trains. We will see. Now, gear one is meshed with the gear two. So the speed ratio, how to write it? We will be able to see this. When we are writing the speed ratio, always we need to consider the gear which is mounted or which is present very first to the shaft, because the the next gear will be rotating the same direction. We need not to consider that. So let me consider. Let me write the speed ratio. Since this is a driver and this is a follower, so n1 by n2, which will be equal to the t2 by t1. Let me write this as the equation one. Now let me write for the gear three and the gear four. So now this gear gear three which rotates the gear four. Now this is the driver and this is the follower. So I will be writing n three by n four which is equal to t four by t three. Let me write this as the equation two. Now we have these two cases. That is. Gear five and gear six. Now gear five is the driver and gear six is the follower. So the speed ratio will be n five by n six, which will be equal to the t six by t five. So let me write this as the equation three. So we know how to write the uh, final speed ratio equation by means of multiplying all the three set of equations. So if I multiply all three set of equations, that is n one by n two. 
into n3 by n4 into n5 by n6 which is equal to rhs in all three equations that is t2 by t1 into t4 by t3 into t6 by t5 so the common uh, the common terms we can delete off so finally what we will get we will and here we can we know that n2 is equal to n3 because both uh, gear 2 and gear 3 rotates in the same speed and uh, n4 and n5 that is uh, both fourth gear and fifth gear will be rotated in the same speed but the number of teeth of gear 2 gear 3 will be different similarly gear 4 gear 5 will be different but the speed of gear 2 and gear 3 will be same similarly the speed of gear 4 and gear 5 will be same so here i have written n2 is equal to n3 and n4 equal to n5 so n2 equal to n3 means these two get cancelled similarly n4 equal to n5 means these two get cancelled so finally what i will be getting n1 by n6 which is equal to t2 into t4 into t6 divided by t1 into t3 into t5 so this is the speed ratio of your compound gear train so what is the train value we know like a train value is nothing but the reciprocal of the the speed ratio equation so, so for this case n1 by n6 equal to t2 into t4 into t6 divided by t1 into t3 into t5 means the reciprocal of the, uh, this uh, speed ratio will be n6 by n1 will be equal to t1 into t3 into t5 divided by t2 into t4 into t6 in words we can write the speed ratio equal to speed of the first driver divided by speed of the last driven or follower even when we are discussing any compound gear problem compound gear train problem where in case instead of the six gear if it is have if it is have seven gears eight gears nine gears or ten gears the same room same rule we will be following that is the speed of the first driver divided by speed of the last a driven or the follower which is equal to the product of number of teeth on the driven divided by product of number of teeth on the drivers so similarly the train value how i will be writing which is the reciprocal of this one which is nothing but speed of the last driven or follower divided by speed of the first driver which is equal to product of the number of teeth on the drivers divided by product of the number of teeth on the driven so we need not to do these kind of calculation in case if the number of gears in any compound gear train say for example 8 9 10 or 4 5 6 so directly we can go with the, this particular formula so we need not to memorize any kind of equations for solving any numericals simply we can remember for the speed ratio it is speed of the first driver divided by speed of the last driven or the follower the uh, train value will be the reciprocal of this one and you see the given compound gear conditions see how many uh, gears are there and the corresponding uh, teeth we can able to write for example in this case six uh, gears are there so i have total written uh, all the even numbers in the uh, numerator and all the odd numbers in the denominator in case it is eight means so i will be writing the equation uh, number of teeth in the right hand side will be t2 t4 t6 t8 divided by t1 t3 t5 t7 that that's all similarly if it is uh, four gears means how i'll be writing it is n1 by n4 which is equal to t2 into t4 divided by t1 into t3 the same procedure we can follow for all the compound gear train problems so we will see a problem so that we will come to know how to how the formula will be changing for the each compound gear different cases thank you